Friends and greetings from Iceland. We are watching uh, the ongoing volcanic eruption at um, Sunukur Gingar Crater. And this is how it looks uh, today. The volcano is still erupting and it uh, has formed a sort of a crater, small crater around the most active fissure. Most of activity is concentrated right here and the rest of the vents went off and the lava is spilling primarily around the cone and it does not travel that far and we will take a look at the latest update from Icelandic Met Office um, which says that um, the volcanic eruption activity has been relatively stable since uh, yesterday and there is very slow movement of lava towards south coast highway so the road most likely will survive. In yesterday the lava was at 330 meters from the road and the margin has not advanced significantly in the past uh, two days. Uh, eruptive activity has been relatively stable and the eruption is focused at two locations along the eruptive fissure but the northernmost craters that were active yesterday are not active now. The most active areas uh, are, are near the southern end of the eruptive fissure that opened it on Saturday evening. An interesting article appeared in the morning newspaper, an interview with the volcanologist uh, Arman Höskulsson, who draws parallel between this eruption and the eruptions at Krapla Volcano in the north of Iceland. He says that this is more powerful uh, eruption than the other eruptions in this area and in this respect it's much like how Krapla behaved. It started with small eruption and the next eruptions got bigger and bigger. It's just a typical sliding of the earth plates event, he concludes. So we might see even bigger eruption uh, uh, in the near future, yes, you know, uh, there had been 20 magma outbreaks at Krapla in the course of many years, uh, and only nine of them, though, ended in eruptions, but eruptions were getting bigger and bigger as time uh, ran. Heskulsson says that there is nothing that predicts anything other than uh, the magma accumulation uh, it will continue just as soon as the eruption stops as soon as the pressure drops the tunnel closes and the process begins again he says the ongoing eruption started very strongly and then it's rapidly emptied uh, itself uh, now the pressure is falling uh, it builds up between the two and we get the inflation then it's like you make a hole in a balloon and then the pressure collapses Herskulson continues saying that the magma chamber is rapidly emptied now because of the amount of the flow that was in the beginning the amount of lava has been for 500 cubic meters per second which is among the highest we have seen he says the footage that you are watching is from the last year as the current area of the eruption is closed. That's why I'm using the footage from 2023 eruption, which is very similar in pattern uh, to the current one, when we could access the area as it was somewhat uh, smaller in size uh, and uh, people were allowed to come. Uh, right after the eruption started on Reykjanes Peninsula, we started to have rather cold weather and a lot of snow fall in Iceland. Even some avalanches took place in the northwest of Iceland. And this strange uh, cooling of weather in Iceland in March, when we started to have a lot of snow, uh, which is rather unusual for this time of the year, 
might be because of sulfate aerosols which were injected into the atmosphere about Iceland from this volcanic eruption. A recent theory suggests that sulfate aerosols may lower the Earth's temperature by reflecting away solar radiation, negative radiative forcing. Similar cooling of weather took place back in 1783-1784 when we had uh, the volcanic eruption of Laki, which generated the biggest lava flow in the modern history of mankind. Lava flooded 550 square kilometers back then and caused cooling of climate not only in Iceland but worldwide around the northern hemisphere. As you know, the summer of 1783 in Greenland was known as a summer that never came because it was winter in the summer and there was a failure of crops all around Europe uh, that year, uh, which resulted in uh, famine in many places uh, uh, in the northern hemisphere. Several million people died, even in Egypt, India, Japan, from the failure of crops. And the summer of 1783 in England was known as Ash Summer because of fallout uh, of ash from Iceland. This is, of course, not that extreme, not that big eruption, but it's the biggest of all three, which emitted uh, a big amount of um, sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, which can affect the climate in Iceland and neighboring countries, perhaps in Greenland depending on where the plum uh, moves. Volcanoes emit uh, sulfur di dioxide gas uh, as O2 which reacts with the water in the atmosphere to form sulfuric acid, uh, usually marketed as H2SO4. Uh, when volcanic plumes are emitted powerfully enough to reach the stratosphere, uh, the sulfuric acid uh, can form a persistent haze of liquid droplets reflecting away sunlight and cooling the earth for a year or two. Uh, this is precisely what happened back in 1783 during the eruption of uh, Lucky. Volcanic gases can be emitted directly into the atmosphere from magma or by magma interacting with crustal rocks. Uh, they can be observed with spectroscopic instruments from ground and space, and their future dispersion can be modeled, allowing forecasts of gas and aerosol concentrations to be made. A volcanic gas composition and concentrations can be modified through interaction with ground or surface waters. Uh, gases generated by heating and vaporizing groundwater in volcanic geothermal areas. Volcanic gases can also remain pressurized in, in the subsurface or within lakes. Uh, volcanic aerosol sizes range from a few nanometers to several hundred micrometers, and volcanic aerosol refers to particles formed through condensation of volcanic gases or through reaction of the gases with the atmosphere and sunlight and is thereby distinct from ash or tephra that is formed through fragmentation of magma or lava. Aerosols can be liquid or solid form and evolve between um, these states with time. Uh, volcanic gases and aerosols are emitted by almost any type of volcanic activity. The lucky eruption in Iceland, which began in June 1783, lasted for half a year, was followed by many of the typical climate responses to volcanic eruptions, suppressed precipitation and droughts, crop failure and surface cooling lasting to two, two to three years. Uh, historical records show that the winter of 1783-1784 was cold and harsh. Uh, Benjamin Franklin wrote, perhaps the winter of 1783-74 was more severe than any that had happened for many years. Darigo 
attributed the cold season to a combination of negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation and a positive phase of uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation. Pausata showed that higher latitude eruptions can increase the likelihood of an El Nino in the event following the eruption. There hasn't been done much research or on the subject, so and I'm not a scientist to delve into this, but I just wanted to note the possible implications of uh, such eruptions uh, on the climate uh, in Iceland and in the Northern Hemisphere, possibly. Mm. The better source of information on this would be ascending volcanologist Thorvaldur Thorrason, who wrote some articles on the subject. In the meantime, volcanic eruption in Iceland continues at smaller rates, and at the moment, uh, this eruption uh, lasted for over two and a half days and has become longer than the three eruptions that have occurred in the area since December 2023. It continues to erupt in the same places as in the afternoon yesterday, which are south of the fissure. A crater rims continue to build and some magma jet activity remains. Uh, the edge of the Lau, which was about 300 meters from south coast uh, highway, does not seem to have moved forward since yesterday. A lava flow um, in the, from the craters remains mostly to the south, uh, but active lava margins flow on top of what uh, flowed at the beginning of the eruption. There has been uh, no seismic activity in there and around the magma tunnel since the eruption began, but eruption turbulence is measured and has been quite stable for the past uh, two solar cycles, which is an indication of that power of the eruption has not decreased. Uh, this is what says was said in the latest uh, update from Icelandic Met Office, which was published today at 12 o'clock. So I wish you all the best. Greetings from Iceland. Uh, be well. Have a good rest as this guy next to the volcano <laughs> back uh, in 2023, last year. Luckily, he had the mask. It's not a good idea to sleep next to the volcanoes. I have to warn you about this because of the volcanic gases which stay close to the ground. Be well and God bless you.